Hi and welcome to Topic Busters from OnMaths. Today we're looking at estimation. I reckon I use estimation about 50 times a day. Enjoy! Hi and welcome to this Topic Buster. So we're looking at estimation. Now estimation in the real world will be walking into a shop and you're buying five items for 99p and you know it's roughly going to be five pounds but you can extend that we can use that in we can use estimation in a whole load of areas of maths now what i don't like is teachers saying it's guessing because guessing and estimation are not the same thing when an exam question asks you for estimating there are some rules and very very strict rules the first rule is we're looking at rounding everything to one significant figure there are exceptions to that, which we will cover in this video. So throughout this video, I'm going to go through the basics of estimation from start to finish. Okay, so to start off, we're going to round to one significant figure. So each of these numbers, we're going to round to one significant figure. So the first one's 4.371. Now, significant figure means we just want the first number. Now there is an exception to that, which we'll come to later on, but for that one, the number we want is that 4. So we write down 4. Now we have to look at the next number along, which is this 3. It won't be part of our answer, but if that one is 5 or more, then that 4 would go up to a 5. If it's less than 5, which it is, it's 3, that 4 stays the same. So our answer to that is 4. So for the next one, we are only interested in this figure here. So that 9 is the only number we're interested in, apart from just to look at that. Now that 6 is 5 or more, so that 9 then goes to a 10. Now if you imagine there's a football match and 96,430 people attended it, which is massive, and you were asked to estimate it, roughly how many are there, you wouldn't say 10. So, you mustn't forget that for each of the other numbers here, they must turn into zero. So, that 6 will turn into zero, that 4 will turn into zero, the 3 will turn into zero, and that zero at the end will stay as a zero. So, again, 96,430 people went to the football match. That's around 100,000. Will that make sense? And the last one, now we've got to remember the rule. The rule is it's the first number from the left-hand side that's not a zero. So that four there is the first number that's not a zero. That means that five there becomes our deciding number. So we know it will be naught point, oh, if I get this right, naught point, and it's either going to be naught point four or naught point five. Well, the next number along is a five, so that four will go to a five. And those are our answers. OK, now have a go yourself. OK, so for the first question, this 5 here is the first number. And the 5 there is the one that decides whether that stays the same or goes up by 1. Because this number is a 5, that f other 5 goes up by 1. So the answer is 6. The next question, that 8 there is the number we're looking for, but that 3 will decide whether that 8 turns into a 9. Because this number is less than 5, that 8 stays the same. However, all the other numbers turn into 0. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. OK, and the last question, this 5 is our decider number, and that 3 decides whether uh, 5 is our major number, and that 3 decides whether that 5 goes to a 6 or not. So it's 0 0.5 because that 3 is less than 5. OK, so when we're looking at estimating, we've got to round each number to one significant figure. So if we do the first one, we're looking at these two numbers here. So the 5 is our significant digit and then the 3, 2 and 7 turn to 0 and then the 2 is our significant digit but the next number along is 5 or more so that 2 will go to a 3 now if I add 5,300 
I get 5,300. That's an estimate. Next one, our significant digit is an 8. So that will turn to an 8. The next number along is a 3, so it's not going to round up. The next number, now the significant digit is the 2. So it's going to be times 2, but that 2 will go to a 3 because the next number along is 5 or more. So that will be 3. And 8 times 3 is 24. Now this last one's a little bit more complicated and there's a, a few bits, a few gotchas in this. So let's round the digits first. Now some people between 10 and 20 they leave it as a whole number. Sometimes you can get away with that but I will just keep it as one significant figure the whole time because the examiners are used to marking that way. So that 1 will turn into a 2 and then that everything else turns to 0 so it will turn into 20 over and let's look at the next number so the significant digit is that 5, so it would be 0 0.5 because the next number along is less than 5. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. I can either think to myself how many halves are there in 20 or you can times top and bottom by 10. So I'm going to make it 200 over 5. Now I know there's 10 fives in 50 so therefore there's 20 in 100 and 40 in 200. OK, have a go yourself. OK, so let's get started. Uh, we have a look at what the significant digit is, which is that 4. The 7 will move that up to a 5, and then the others will turn to 0. And that 3 is our significant number, so that is fine. And then everything else will turn to 0. So the answer to that will be 5,300. So the next one, the significant digit is that 6, and that will just stay as a 6 because the next number is less than 5, and the significant digit is a 2, but that will turn to a 3 because of the 7 is the next number, and 6 times 3 is 18. And this last one, so the significant digit of the top one is the 5, so it will turn to 50, and the bottom, well, it's just 0 0.5. So we can leave that because that's already to one significant figure. I can times top and bottom by 2, uh, sorry, by 10. So that would be 500 over 5. And we know that's going to be 100 because 100 times 5 is 500. Okay, so now we start on basically what your GCSE question will start to look like. So these have all been these are all like previous exam questions. So let's have a look at going through this. So the first thing we need to do is round all of these to one significant figure. So we're going to round that top one to four and the next one to three hundred because that two rounds to a three because of that six over sixty. And this is how you get your first mark. Second thing to do is times the tops together. So do the tops and bottoms of the fraction. So 4 times 3 is 12, and then I've got the two zeros from the 300. Now at this point I can cancel two of the zeros, so one at the top, one at the bo bottom. So I'm basically dividing by 10. So the question is, what is 120 divided by 6? Well I know 12 divided by 6 is 2. So 120 divided by 6 is going to be 20. Same thing with the next one. Okay, We're going to make them one significant figure for all the numbers. So we've got 70 times, and this time it's 200, because that 1 turns into a 2, over 70 times, and this is just 1, and that's okay. 7 times 2 is 14. And then we've got one zero from the 70 and two zeros from the 200 over 70 times 1, which is just 70. Again, I can cross off a zero top and bottom, divide top and bottom by 10. Now, I know that there are two 7s that go into 14. And so there's going to be 200 that go into 1,400. So I know I times the 7 by the 2 to make 14 but I need the two extra zeros to get the two extra zeros in my answer. On the last one, 
around all of them to one significant figure. So that 3.26 can turn into a 3 times, and that 204 is just going to be 200 over, and that's going to be 0 0.5. So 3 times 2 is 6, put the two extra zeros on. Now, some of you might have noticed that when you divide by a half, it just doubles the top number. So I can just double the top number. Okay, it's just something to remember. Whenever you're dividing by a half, you double the top number. And that could save you some time. Okay, if you want to have a go yourself. Okay, so for this first question, we want to obviously round these to one significant figure. So we're going to round these numbers here. So that top number is going to be 3. The next one's going to be 400 and then the bottom one is going to be 20. So 3 times 4 is 12 and put on the extra two zeros and again I can divide them one by 10 so 120 divided by 2 so half of 120 is 60. So for the next one we want to round the 9, the 1, the 4 and the 5 so that 9 turns into a 10 because the next number is a 7, so that's going to be 100. Times 143, well that 1 just stays as a 1, and the rest turn to 0. And then 43 turns into 40, and 54 turns into 50. So we've got 1 with 4 zeros over 4 times 5 is 20. And then I'll put the extra two zeros on. Okay, so let's cancel. So let's cancel one, two, three. Ten divided by two is just five. Okay, so for the last one, these are our significant figures. So 5.53, so that's going to turn into a six. 253, so that's going to be a 300 and then over 0 0.5. 6 times 3 is 18, 0, 0. And as we said before, if we are dividing by 0 0.5, we double the number. So doubling, uh, 18 would give us 36. So doubling 1800, we got us 3,600 or 3,600. And there we go. Okay, so a few more questions to go. And these are our kind of exceptions and different kind of questions on estimation. So this first one looks quite easy because we know we go around that 3 and around that 7. So it's going to be 3 times square root. But if we round that to 80, we don't know what the square root of 80 is, and the whole point of estimation is we should be able to do it quickly without a calculator. So I don't know what square root of 80 is, but I do know what the square root of 81 is. So we estimate it to be 81 instead. So it becomes 3 times 9, which is the square root of 81, which is 27. Okay, for this next one, it says r equals 2.32. And it gives us an equation or formula, which is the area of a circle. So I'm going to estimate r to be, well, have a look at it. It's that 2 there, isn't it? So r equals 2. Now, pi is an infinite number, which is not great. Very, very long decimal, well, infinite decimal. It's 3.141 blah, 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 blah. So I can estimate pi to be 3, and that's absolutely fine. So pi r squared becomes... 3 times 2 squared, which is 3 times 4, which is 12. Now, new to this GCSE, this new GCSE, is uh, questions that ask you to comment on your answer. Now, what they're looking for here is whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate. Now, if you have a look at both our R and our pi, we took a bigger decimal and made it smaller. We made r, instead of 2.32, we made it 2. Instead of pi being 3.14, blah, 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 
we made it 3. So we lowered both of the values. Therefore, all they're looking for here is a bit of a sentence maybe, but they're looking for the word underestimate. And that tells them that, that, that your answer, the answer to the previous question, was an underestimate. And try and form it as a sentence. OK, have a go. OK, so for this first question, uh, we've got a 4 and we've got a 6. So 4.17 rounds to 4. And this time the nearest square number is 64. So that's 4 times, 8 times 8 is 64, so 4 times 8, and 4 times 8 is 32. Okay, I'm going to round R to 4, Okay, because that number there is our significant digit, and next number is a 3. Again, I'm going to round pi to be 3, and so I'm going to do 2 times pi, which is we're, we're estimating to be 3, times 4. So two, uh, 3 times 4 is 12, so 2 times 12, which is 24. Or I could have done 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. And we rounded the R down, and we rounded pi down. So again, a sentence that involves the word underestimate. So you would say that we rounded R down and we rounded pi down, um, therefore our answer is going to be an underestimate. So I hope that's been helpful. Remember with estimation, it's almost always about rounding everything to one significant figure. Now, there are sometimes exceptions like square roots, where it's just not making it easier. Estimation is all about making a question easy, so you can roughly estimate whether you've got the right answer, how much things cost in the shop, whether that bridge is roughly the right size for that ravine. Whatever it is, estimation we use all the time in the real world. Don't forget also that the exam can ask whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate. Have a look at how you've rounded things. Have you rounded everything up or have you rounded everything down? Thank you very much for watching this Topic Buster and I'll see you again soon.